This is example problem 1.1-1. The problem asks us to determine the internal resultant loads at point C. Here's our structure. It, here's point C on the horizontal member. There's also a vertical member. There are two supports, a roller at A, a pin at B, external load. Uh, it's a distrib uniformly distributed load right here. So here's our paper all set up. We have the given information, which is essentially the image in the problem. We have for and find the internal loads at C. Now here's space for our solution. Now the first step will be to draw a free body diagram. Okay, now that we have our free body diagram prepared, we show the reaction. At A, there's a, just a single vertical reaction. At B, for the support, we replace the support with uh, a vertical and a horizontal reaction. Now, we will use our equations of static equilibrium to uh, solve for our reaction forces. And we know already that because there are no external forces applied to the structure, that our Bx reaction force is equal to zero. Okay, summing the moments about B to get my reaction force at A, uh, we have our distributed load is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. It's acting over a distance of one meter. And the distance from the moment arm is the location of the centroid, is right in the middle of that distributed load horizontally over to point B. And that's a distance of 3 meters plus half a meter, so that's 3.5 meters. That's where that value comes from. For AY, that distance, that reaction force is multiplied by a distance of 3 meters. You can see the 3 meters shown in the diagram. Okay, now summing the forces in the y direction, we have our reaction force that we found previously of 1.75 kilonewtons at A. That's acting up, so it's positive. Then we have our distributed load, which is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter, acting over a distance of 1 meter, acting down, plus our vertical reaction force at B. We can calculate then by is equal to a negative 0.25. The negative sign simply means that I drew my arrow in the wrong direction. The way I can show this also is 0 0.25 kilonewtons pointing down. Now I'm ready to find the internal resultant loads at C, which is the point of this problem. And to do that, we need to make a theoretical cut in the structure at point C. The next step is to draw a free body diagram of the cut structure. Okay, I've drawn a free body diagram. I've put on the external loads. There's really only one. That's the reaction force, the vertical reaction force at B. Now here at point C, where I have cut the member, I'm going to draw the three internal resultant loads. They're going to be a normal force, which I'll call N sub C, a shear force, which I'll call V sub C, and internal moment. I'll call that M sub C. And now I will use my three equations of static equilibrium to solve for my unknown internal resultant loads. Summing the forces in the x direction, we only have our internal resultant force, N sub C. No other external loads applied, so our internal resultant load, N sub C, is equal to zero. Summing forces in the y direction, our internal shear force, V sub C, pointing upward, it's positive, minus 0 0.25 kilonewtons, a force at B, all equals zero, so our internal shear force, V sub C, is equal to 0 0.25 kilonewtons. And summing the moments, I chose to sum the moments at the cut, summing the moments equal to zero, we get that the internal resultant moment m sub c is equal to a negative 0 0.5 kilonewton meters. I could also write m sub c is equal to 0 0.5 kilonewton meters acting in this direction. Those three internal resultant loads we solve for are our answer. Our problem is complete.